Hi everyone, once again, thank you for joining our webinar, which is titled Using Technology to Increase Student Engagement. My name is Ashley Wright, and I'm your host for today's session, Janice Prongstatter, Teaching and Learning Consultant for the United Kingdom and Ireland, and a qualified primary teacher is your presenter for the session, so over to you, Janice. Great. Thanks a lot, Ashley. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us. Um, well, for me, it's this uh, afternoon. Um, and if you're in the UK, it will be for you too. But we do have people that tend to join us from all over the world on these sessions. So welcome wherever you are. It'd be really great if um, people wanted to chat in your locations, who you are in your location um, in the chat then, because we always like to see where people are um, joining us from today. Now, we are going to ask you to use the chat facility and not the Q&A again today. So if you do want to um, have something general you want to, to comment on or say or a question, um, you can choose all participants so that everybody who's joined the call is able to see the chat. If you have a specific question that you want to ask privately, then if you make sure that you select the all panelists option, um, then Ashley will make sure that he picks that up and can answer it or will ask me at, at one of the times that we break for questions. Now, I will tell you, I do have to keep the chat window closed myself, um, so Ashley will be watching that, um, but I can't see comments and questions coming in as I'm presenting, so I will stop at intervals. Okay, so we'll get started. And I was supposed to have this, this page up when Ashley introduced us, but here it is now. Okay, so engaging pupils remains one of the biggest challenges that um, teachers face today, with many educators looking out for creative ways to motivate and enthuse their learners. So getting that attention in the class, keeping it and getting that enthusiasm for learning. Promethean have always prided themselves on recognizing current education trends and are continually working hard to provide not only technology and software to support these trends, but also to provide support and advice and more on how to use these modern tools to meet the changing learner needs in the classroom as well as the um, adopt, adapting education system. In fact, we've dedicated an entire area of our website, and I don't know if everybody is familiar with this, our wonderful website here, Resourced. Um, and this is, this is a UK site, but the information on here is relevant really for anybody in education who's just looking at some different ideas to be inspired and to be innovative. So we have a whole section here on student engagement. And if you scroll down, we've got some great blogs and infographics and, and other pieces of information, not all about Promethean products, about different um, engaging technologies being used in the classroom. So I do recommend that um, you get yourself subscribed for this site and have a look at it. Now, one of the blogs that was shared on that site, which I found particularly interesting, and I think it, it kind of ties into the relevancy of today's session, relates to um, boosting engagement for learners as they get older. It offers up five strategies, which you can see on the screen there, um, that have been found to be successful in capturing the underlying enthusiasm that all learners have inside them um, and bringing that enthusiasm into the classroom. Now, to me, I don't think that these are just for older children. I think that this is relevant for, for any age. Um, and how you use them and what proportion you use them depends on the individual needs of the learners that you have in front of you. So in this session, we're going to be taking a look at some of these things um, through our new, um, our latest cloud-based software class flow. Um, and we're going to take a look at how uh, the developers in Promethean have used research feedback such as this to create a software platform which can be used to effectively support the engagement agenda, okay, engagement in the classroom. So let's have a look at what we're going to do today. So I've got some um, little things on the screen in front of you. Now I just want to say to remind you that this session is not a training session. I couldn't do a training session in this type of environment with, um, with a, a huge range of people joining us as well. It's more of a general orientation webinar that's designed to help you better understand what class flow is and how it can be used in your classroom. Okay, so let's get started. Now, as you can see, I'm actually in class flow um, and I, I've started, a, I'm actually playing a lesson. Okay, so just as if you were in my class, I've got a lesson that I've pre-created, I've put the content together and I'm playing for you. What I'm going to do though, 
first is I, I just want to flip over to another browser, and I'm going to do it a little bit throughout the session, so just bear with me, um, because I want to show you how you create a class flow account if you don't already. So if you're on the, in the UK, you want to type in classflow.co.uk. And if you're not in the UK, then I do know that I've got um, our um, Emanuele, who is a wonderful person on our, our user engagement team for the international region, who would be very happy to make sure that um, you know which Classflow site it is that, that you should be registering for. So once I put that in, it then takes me to the home screen here. So you can see at the top, it says classflow.com, but I have the ENGB after it to say that this is the, the English um, for the UK, the Great Britain account, okay? So what you can do is you could create a new account here by just filling in the required information. It's not too hard, it's not too arduous, I promise. Um, uh, well, the other thing that you can do is if you click login, um, and then once we get here, I want to log in as a teacher, we do have online authentication. So you could, um, you could log in to your Classflow site, set up your Classflow account by using your Google, Microsoft 365, or Facebook credentials. So if you don't want to go through that whole process of filling in all of that registration information, you don't have to because you can use online authentication from these three sources. Okay, so I hope that um, that is clear up where you get started, but again, um, just remember that if you're in the UK, you'd be using classflow.co.uk, and you just want to type that into your address bar. Okay. Now, because we are, um, I'm, I am running a lesson with you, and it's almost like you're my students, I'm actually going to make you my students in my lesson. So what I'd like you to do, if you have um, a smartphone or a tablet handy, it might be easiest to join using um, one of those. Or the other thing that you can do is just as I did, open up another browser tab. So I'm opening up another browser tab there, and you can join the lesson that way. So in the other browser, you need to type in classflow.co.uk forward slash students. And then when you get the screen that shows this, just click on the join class tab. And then the code that you're going to put in is this one right here, QQQBW. Once you've done that, it'll then give you a field for typing in your name and if you want to select join anyway. If you don't feel comfortable with that, you don't have another device to use and, and you think it'll be a bit um, confusing to flip between watching the webinar and participating with the class, don't feel that you have to. Um, I am connected as a student, so I will show you um, that what that's like as well. Now, the other thing that you might have noticed when I flipped to my student one, um, I'm connected, is that I can engage my students right from the very beginning of the lesson by making use of those devices that they have on hand at their desk. So as you've joined, you might notice that um, I now have a card that goes right out to your device that just says, welcome. Well done, welcome for joining my, or well, well done for joining my class, and a, and a little flap there. So I'm able to engage my students. I've given a simple picture there, but it could be a set of instructions that you want them to do as they're waiting for everybody else to get joined. Now, just to show you as well, as I can have a look as a teacher who it is that's joined my class, my session at any time. Um, so if I have her up here, right now I can see that there's 11 participants, 11 students in my class. And if I click that, I then can see who all of those students are. So you can see me there on JP, and I can see quite a lot of other names in there. So thank you very much for joining my class. The other great thing is, is that if I start the lesson and move on to the next page, that code stays there. So if I have students that join the lesson late, join the class late, it doesn't mean that they're excluded from using devices with this lesson because I can get them connected at any time without having to stop the, the actual lesson that we're running. Okay, and a lot of that, a little bit of that is down classroom management as well. Okay, so to start off with, um, I thought let's take a little bit of a look around class flow. So let's get you oriented on where things are actually in class flow before we look at what you can do with it and how to get started. So to do that, 
I'm going to leave this, this one showing, and I'm just going to flip over to another Classflow account, because I do have several of them. Um, and I'm just going to log in here. And this just saves me coming out of that lesson so that I can, I can show you some of the features that I want to speak to you about um, the Classflow environment, first of all. So once you've logged into your account, this is what your home page looks like, your home environment. And you can see that I've got my little tabs at the top here that enable me to navigate through the Classflow site. And right now, the one that is highlighted lately here is home, and this is telling me that this is my home page. So right away, um, there's some really valuable pieces of information here. For example, if I wanted to, I could just start a search for resources um, in our online user community called Marketplace. I am going to come back to that, so I'm going to leave that for right now. We also have a couple of extra downloads here, Classflow Desktop and um, Classflow for PowerPoint. Now, I'm not going to talk about these at all today, but I do have a couple of webinars coming up before the end of the school year which cover these. So you might want to look at, at those um, titles and get yourself registered for, for either of those if you're interested. What I want to direct you to is just this information down here. So right on the home page, there's lots of information to help you get started understanding and using Classflow. So all of these tabs tell us the different categories of things, activities, that I can do within Classflow. Right now I've got Create selected, so you can see that I can create all of these different things. If I click on one of the little Show Me How, this will open up a little video tutorial that you can watch that would show you how to get started with creating a lesson or get started with creating an assessment. And then once, I, once I'm ready to go on, I can click here, and this will take me right to that section in class flow so I can get started. Okay, so there's lots of support built in right there on the home page to get you started. So it's worth just having a little click around to see. You might not use everything right away, um, but just to see the potential of what there is available to you within Classflow, what you can, what you can be using with your, your learners. The second tab up here is our classes. Now, once you um, really get started in, in using Classflow, this is where I would tend to send you to. And this is where um, you're able to set up classes um, to use Classflow with. So you can see here I've got a variety of classes down the side. If I click on the little arrow here, and I notice it's, it's displaying a bit. Um, funny, so it's not actually showing me. There we go. That's it. Um, you can see for my demo class, I can create a home page. I can change the home page. I could have calendar specific to that class. Um, and I can also have a comment board. So we could um, post discussions back and forth. Um, I can do that because of the type of class that this is. And this is actually a student-generated class where my learners have their own class flow account to connect to. I have my class list, so you can see here all of the students in my class and their, their lovely names. Um, but what I've also been able to do with this class is I can create groups. So I've now organized these students into math groups, specific math groups. So there we are starting to delve down into recognizing the needs of individual students and being able to tailor activities that are suited to different students within the class. It also collects everything that I've done with a particular class. So any lessons I've delivered, um, polls, assignments, and assessments. And I'm going to cover these a little bit more um, just as we move on, OK? So uh, we will come back to that. Just to create a class, if you do want to go back and do that, um, all you need to do is click on the Create here. And then you just follow the simple instructions here. So it gives you some information on the different types of classes that you have um, and quite self-explanatory to get started. But there are those little video tutorials to help you all the way through to make sure that you've got the support that you needed to get working with Classflow. One thing I do want to point out here is if I just come back to this demo class, you notice here that I have a class code. So every class that I create gets a unique code. And this is how the students know, um, this is how the students 
join a particular class by using um, the unique class codes. Okay. The next um, tab up here is My Resources. Now, this is probably um, the area of class flow that I expect that you'll use the most. Um, and this is where I can keep all of those. Um, I can store files. I can store um, just about every file type within here. So I can store all of that content that I want to use when creating my lessons. It's also where I can, I can store um, all of those lessons that I've created or that I've taken from the marketplace that other teachers have created or my assessments or my assignments or anything that I want to be able to deliver through class flow um, to my class. I can store everything here. And you can see in the middle one here, I've got some folders, and I can delve deeper into those folders just by clicking on the little arrow, and it shows me the different things I have in the folders. And you can see I've created my own folder structure down here. So it's up to you how you want that to be, because you set your folder structures the way you want it to, to, to be stored. Another thing I want to point to you down here as well is that um, it's, it's fairly simple to add a resource into Classflow. So I can just go up to New and File Upload, and then this will take me into my um, desktop, and I could select something, um, and I'm just going to open that, and then that will put that into my um, resources. You can see it's just put it there. So it's simple enough to bring things in that way. but I also, we also know that a lot of people are now making more use of um, cloud storage out there. It takes up less space on our computers, so storing things in the cloud that we can just pull on when we want it. So we do recognize the need to have um, connections between the cloud storage. So if you do have um, files stored here, you can access them directly from Dropbox, Google Drive, or OneDrive, and bring them in to Classflow to begin to start creating your resources. Okay. This is also where I would go to create lessons, assignments, assessments, um, and activities, which are some of the things that we're going to look at a little bit later in this session. Now, the last tab I want to um, point out is uh, the marketplace. So the marketplace is our online user community where teachers are able to go um, and have a look at what other people have created, other resources that, that people have created and shared, and download them into your My Resources um, to be able to use in your own class. It's, um, we have lots of content on here, so um, it is just doing a search and having a look around. So I can put in a keyword search, so I'm going to just do key stage right now, and it will pull up resources that are relevant to that. So you can see it's not just class flow lessons, because we also have flip charts, um, web links, PDF documents, smart notebook files, um, class flow activities. And you can see down here all of the different file formats that we have. Um, if you do get a chance, have a look at some of these 3D models and simulations. They're absolutely fantastic and look, and look great in lessons. So we accept lots of different file formats here that teachers are sharing for other teachers to be able to use in their lessons. We also have the ability to allow teachers to buy and sell. Um, so if you wanted to make a little bit of extra money, you could create content to put on Marketplace um, to be able to sell at a small cost and have other teachers purchase it if you want. I could drill down further than that by just using the filters down the side here, as you see. So I might just decide I want key stage, but I want it to be English specific. Um, so looking at my, my literacy or my English language classes, and now you can see it's filtered down to give me one specifically um, using that keyword as well. Okay. So when you do get a bit of time, have a look at the marketplace because there are some fantastic resources on here, and it's a great way of just getting started using it, especially if you're if you're just brand new to Classflow. Now I am just going to, I'm going to pause for questions in just a second, but before I do, um, I just wanted to show you one last area up here, and, and um, I'll come back to this time and time again. Um, there's lots of help built right into it to get you using this software very quickly. And one of the things we do have is if I click on that green um, question mark, 
it takes me to um, a chat window. So we do have the ability to have a live chat. And um, if I click New Conversation, you see we've got three people here currently that are, are manning the chat. Um, and as you can see, they tend to reply in under five minutes. Um, so this is a great way of, in the moment, asking a question about what you're trying to do and getting an answer back almost immediately. And they do work in um, you know, basically business or sorry, um, school hours from around the world. Um, so they are accessible there for help. With the little drop down menu as well, we also have um, our help pages that you can go to find out information and our support pages as well if you have a particular question that you need answered. And there's also a little video tutorial. Now, these video tutorials will be um, specific to the area of flat flow that you're in. So you can see right now we're in the marketplace. So all the little video tutorials that I'm seeing are relevant to the marketplace. If I were to click on resources and go back to that little drop down, you can see I've got a different um, amount of videos and topics of videos there as well. So they are unique depending on which um, area of the flat flow site that you're in. Okay, so just before we move on to the next one, I'm just going to take a quick break and I'm going to ask um, Ashley if there's any questions. Uh, no, we haven't had any questions so far. Okay, um, please remember, do use that chat if you do have any questions at all. Um, and it's always great to, to hear comments and some feedback on what you think about the session um, so far as well. Okay, so if everybody's happy then, I'll just motor on. So I've still got my class connected here, um, and we are going, I am going to um, speak to you in a second. What I want to show you as well is I've just expanded my carousel. So these are all of the cards that make up this particular lesson. And if I click the little one at the bottom, you can also see um, any student cards that come along with it. And this is a good reason for me to stop because I knew I would miss this student card here. So when I clicked on uh, finding your way around, I actually had a student card that some of you would notice had come out to your device that gives you an idea of some of the things that you're able to do within Glassflow. Okay, and I'm just going to tuck that back in again. And if I want to, I can close that right up. The other great thing is if I'm not worried about um, getting into my tab, my, my um, different applications down at the bottom or my tabs at the top, I can full screen that and make that nice and big so I don't have all that distraction around it for my students as well. I'm just going to put that back down because I want to be able to get to those tabs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of this for a second and I want to show you Instant Whiteboard. So, because today is really about that orientation, getting you familiar with how Classflow works, I want to show you some ways now um, that mean that you can get started using it very, very quickly without having to spend lots of time learning it and preparing things in advance. And one of the ways of doing that is by using um, the Instant Whiteboard feature. And within Instant Whiteboard, you can see here, um, you get some presentation tools, and we also have the polling. And this is fantastic because this is our introducing instant feedback. So at any time in the lesson, I can find out how my students are doing. So I'm going to come out of this lesson for a minute, but don't worry. Um, keep your screen, student screens open because you're going to connect right back in this time into my instant whiteboard. So when I come here, I just want to go up to the top and hovering, I get that little tool tip right here, and this is my instant whiteboard. And when I click that, it then opens me up into this um, whiteboard environment. So I have a blank, blank page. Basically, this enables me to create a lesson on the fly with my students in front of me. So you can see down the edge here, similar to what um, my lesson when I was in presenter looks like. I've got my tools down the side here. My students have connected right back in because I'm using the same class code. So even though I came out of one lesson into another, you've connected back in. And I could do things like pick up my pen, which is not very easy to write with a mouse. So not too bad for a hello. 
I can click on that and I get more pen options. I have a highlighter, I have an eraser, I can change my colors, my thickness. Um, I've got various tools here, like my protractor and my ruler. So I can bring these on and be able to use them with my class, have my learners come up and interact with the tools on here if they want. So I could rotate that, I could make that longer, and I could use my pen and we could draw a line, a nice straight line there as well. Okay, you can close that down by getting rid of it. And you also have things like presentation tools you might be familiar with from Active Inspire, um, our little reveal tool, so being able to hide things on my page. And what I like about this reveal tool as well is that I can pull it um, two ways at the same time to cover things. Okay, if I want to not add another page in, I've a card in, I've got a little plus here, so I can add a blank card, and you can see I'm starting to build up that lesson um, just from ad hoc. I have my students attached, so I could send a card to you, so I could send this lovely hello to you, and then um, for those of you that aren't connected to students, you can see my student view. I now have that hello card sent to me, um, and I also have my polling ability there as well. So I could open up my poll, and I'm just going to send out a text, and I want everybody just to text in to me one way that you think you could use Instant Whiteboard. Okay, so if you just type in your idea, I'm going to do brainstorming a new topic, and then your students would submit that answer in there. And if I come back here um, to the teacher view, up at the top left here, I can see that I still have six people that are working on their answers. But what I can do is click on that, and I can see all of those fantastic answers coming in from my class. So we can see quite a few different ideas. Right now it's displaying in anonymous mode, so I, I just um, I don't see the names of my students that are joining. But I do have the ability to view that if I want, just by clicking on that show names, or I could hide names again. I can also view that information in different ways. So we could have it as a pie chart or as a graph, okay? So lots of different ways that, that we can view that, probably the best for text. So depending on the type of question, um, the way the information is presented in um, the results viewer is slightly different, okay? And if I want to, I can just close that down to come out of it, and I just want to make sure I stop that. Now, one of the other really nice types of polls, so you can see that there's eight fantastic types of, of polls here that, that mean that I can um, get that feedback, that communication with my students at any point in the lesson, lesson to keep that engagement going. Um, what I really like is this one here called Creative. So I could send a Creative card, and I could ask everybody to just really quickly pick up your pen tool from your toolbar and draw me a picture of what you um, see in the closest window to you. I don't know, it's the first thing that popped into my head. So I could say I am sitting in my kitchen and I could see a fence out the back and I could see a little cat on it. I shouldn't be drawing on that one. Um, that's a card I've sent to you. So if you want to just um, draw something on there so you can see I've got the student view again. Okay, so I could pick up my pen and I'm just going to draw a little face. Even if you just want to draw a face, that's fine as well. He's got horns. And I want to just submit that. So I'm going to send that in. OK. And this time, if I view my results, you'll see oh, somebody's on the wine already. Very good. I'm not quite there yet. Maybe I'll get there soon. So I can have a look down here, and I can see the contributions that my class has made. These are fantastic. That was just kind of a spur of the moment. Um, decision to ask you to do that, but I love these. What I could do, again, my names are hidden, so I could reveal my names and see who it is staring at a wine glass already if I wanted to. Um, but what I can also do is I could take this student contribution and I could add that into my lesson. Okay, so if I close this now, you'll see that that student card is here. It's in my lesson now. And if I wanted to, I could send that back out and I could ask my class to um, give me some adjectives to describe the car or, or something like that. So then what we're doing is 
Um, I've asked the question to the class. The class have, have, have provided answers back. We discussed it, and then I can send the, the student's contribution out to everybody else, and we could build on that. Okay, so lots of fantastic things that we can do. Okay, I'm just going to come out of that one and find out where I am here. Um, so, um, all of that is building up a lesson. So, you can see my cards here building up a lesson. Um, the one other thing I wanted to, to point out as well is because um, I have more than one person connected, I could just send um, a card to specific to specific learners. And if you were a class that I had set up in advance, I would have that option to be able to send them to specific groups as well. Okay, so pre, pre groups that I had set up in advance. I'm just going to exit this. But what it does ask me to do is do I want to save it? In this case, even though I've got this wonderful picture of a car here, I'm going to say, no, I don't need to save this. But isn't that great that it gives you the option to be able to go back and use that? at any time if you want to. Okay, so moving on, I'm just going to come back into my main lesson here again. And we're just going to go down to page nine. So you can see I can move through my lesson in any fashion that I want. And the next thing I just wanted to talk about is activities. So again, keeping it simple. We've looked at the instant whiteboard, not having to prepare anything in advance, Keeping it simple though, this takes a little bit of preparation unless you go to Marketplace and you just um, have a look at ones that other educators have created and shared and use them, um, but is the activity. Now again, you will have had a card sent out to you on your student devices, so any of my connected students, but just for those of you that haven't connected as a student, you can see here that there's actually 10 different types of activities that I can create using my activity builder. Okay. And just to give you an idea of what an activity looks like, um, I'm going to turn the next page. And handily, I've got an activity I've embedded on here. And what I could do is I could just send that to you and let my class work through it. And I'm not worried about gathering the information, storing the information. At this time, I just want them um, to have, have a try at it. So it might be at the end of a session, and I just want to um, get them to think about what they've learned. So I just want them to review information from the class. Or this could be something that they're actually doing at the display. So I could have a small group of children who are at the display working on this activity on the display, on their multi-touch display. But what I can also do is I could send this out to you as a creative poll. And that's what I'm going to do this time. So once I send it out as a creative poll, and we'll see We'll see if it makes it. it depends on our um, Wi-Fi. And then you can see here on my student view, I've got it. So I can click on Let's Play. And then this is what um, one activity looks like. And this is putting it in order from greatest to least. So then they could start to create the activity and pull them on. If they get it incorrect, it bounces back and can start again. OK? So that's what an activity looks like. And um, I know everybody probably wants to continue playing that, um, but I am going to stop that for now. Okay? By sending that as a creative card, I could have had my class submit their answers, and then I would have been able to have a look at that afterwards if I really wanted to get some feedback on, on what they've learned in the lesson today. I'm just going to come out of um, this lesson again because I want to take you in to show you how to create those activities. So if I um, come back into My Resources, so just the My Resources tab, and I want to click New, and you can see down here in the list I have Activity. And for this one, I'm going to use flashcards, and I'm going to entitle it, title it um, Two Times Table. Okay, and click Done. And then all I have to do here is input the information I want. So I'll just do three quick cards. And you can all watch me and make sure that I'm getting my answers correct. Two times eight. Okay. 
I can then choose my color scheme and I can even choose um, an image if I want to. So I can go into my image library or I can create a custom background. So my image library here, you see I've got some great images here that I can use for a background. Or I could go into um, custom background, put my own image behind there, but I'm just going to leave it as it is. And then what I can do is I could save that and that will save into my resources. I could deliver it to my class. What we're going to have do right now is just have a quick preview. So I just want to see what that looks like. Let's play, and we can see I now have some great flashcards that I could send out as an activity to my class to work on. But maybe I've decided that actually I like flashcards, but I bet there's a, a different activity type. So, um, you know, it's that reinforcement, especially for younger learners, of the same thing, but learning different ways to do it. So I could go here to change my activity, and hey, let's change that to a match activity instead. So this time, if I preview it and we play, you can see that it comes out in a different format. And this time, the students would drag and drop them on there to where they go. Okay, so some really nice, easy, quick activities that, that you can make with your class. And I'm not going to save the changes to that one for right now. Okay, so just before I move on to the final part of the webinar session, um, I'm going to stop and ask Ashley if there are any questions. I just want to remind people, I know that this is a lot of information I'm giving you tonight, but we are recording this session and we will be sending out a link to the recording after the webinar has ended so you can go back and have a look at any of this information um, again at a time suitable to you. Ashley, are there any questions or comments? Uh, no, Janice, there hasn't been any questions but comments yet. Yeah, we've had people saying how uh, that they find it very interesting so far. Uh, we've had people saying that they especially like the fact that you can send out the lessons to them and um, get their answers and also be able to reveal um, who said what as well, sort of gauge um, who, sort of who's doing well in the class, who might need a little bit more development. So, uh, so yeah, no questions, but really positive feedback so far. Fantastic. That's great. Um, perfect. I'll go on then. And, and you're right. I think that one of the fantastic things about it is that push and pull of information, that, that connection with student devices. But the fact that um, if I am connected to a class, so right now I'm using an ad hoc class. And, and just to warn you, if you do use the ad hoc class option, none of that data is kept because there's no class to match it to. So if you want to keep all of that valuable data to be able to look at later on, then you want to make sure that you have gone into your classes and set a class in order to do that, okay? And as I said, we will cover that in other sessions if you want to come back, but if you want to get started even sooner than that, those help videos are there. Remember, just look for your little question mark or your little drop down, and you'll have some videos to help you, okay? so. Just at the final part of the webinar, and I won't be much longer, so bear with me, everybody's doing really great, and I can see the comments popping in, and it's, it's really nice to have some positive feedback there. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about Lesson Builder. So we've looked at how we can easily get started. We can use content that other people have created from Marketplace very quickly, okay? So not having to spend out creating my own, I can use something somebody else has done. Also, how we can use that instant whiteboard, so no preparation. I have that white space and we can start to build up a lesson there and then with my class and still have that connectivity, still use that polling and that and get that engagement going with my class. And we've also looked at activities. So maybe putting a little bit of preparation if I want to make my own, but the builder makes it so easy. Um, and, you know, I could do one concept and just change the activity type and give me five, ten different activities on that same topic. So nice and easy, easy to get started. But there will be some of you, I know, who will want to do more than that, who are ready. I like this. I really want to be able to create my own content. So I have certain ways of doing things with my children, and I want it to, to be my own. I want to own it. Okay, so we're going to have a wee look at Lesson Builder now. So just to show you here on the screen in front of you as I've been talking are some of the things that you can do in Lesson Builder. Now, this isn't a definitive list because there is so much more that you can do, but this just gives you an idea of some of the things 
that you are able to start doing when you create your own lessons in class flow. Okay? So I'm going to come back over to my other class flow account, and we're still there, which is good. Um, and I want to show you how to create a lesson. So I'm going to go into new here, and I have lesson. So I just click on that to start my lesson. And it's going to ask me to name my lesson. So I'm going to just call it webinar. And I want to save that. I could fill in other information if I wanted to. And this is really handy if you are going to use um, your lessons year on year, or if you're sharing with other teachers, or if you want to share them onto the Classflow Marketplace um, to fill in the information. The only one you have to do is the title. And then I'm just going to save that. So once I've come in to my builder, you can see what this, this is what my builder environment looks like. And it might be slightly familiar to other applications that you've, that you've seen out there. So I've got my main toolbox up here at the top. Down the side here is my carousel. So this shows me all the cards as I'm building up my lesson. I have a space down here where I can add in card notes. So again, very valuable for using year on year to remind you your, yourself the learning intention for each of the cards in the lesson. Um, and if I want to, I can just move that out of the way. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. And I've got this nice, big, white space. Now, there are some options over here that are available to me today. And I'm not going to cover all of them. But one I want to do is just options button here. And I can have different card resolutions. And right now, it's using ultra widescreen. Um, and I'm just going to change that to widescreen. Because that's just my preference of what I like for my cards to look like. And everybody's different. And, and again, that's great because class flow recognizes that everybody's different and enables people to do things in their own way. What I could also do here that's quite nice is, is there's a, a variety of themes. So I could um, take some, some themes and apply them. And I can create my own custom themes as well if I want to. So I could create a new theme that I, I could use for, say, my math lesson. I all want them to have the same sort of outlook. Um, so there's ability to do that instead of just having to use the white cards. But if I want to use the white cards, I've got things like my, my text up here, my tools. So I could pick up my pen tool. Um, and I could choose my pen color. So let's go for, we've got blue, I'm going to go for red. And so I could, I could write on there. So I could put text, I could put writing on there. I can add another card just by clicking down here. I can add another card into my lesson. And this time, I might decide I want to put some text on there. So, oh. okay, so I could type some text on there. I can put images. So some of the things that we know are common, common features of, of lessons in class are text, images, being able to annotate. Up here, I've got a little folder for insert. So if I click on that, I can then go into my resources, and I could take any resources that I have here and insert them onto my card. Or I could do a, a Bing image search right here. And since I'm in Edinburgh today, I'm just going to select Edinburgh there. And I could see my pictures available to me, have a look at it. Do I like that one? Yes, I do. That's a lovely one. So I'm going to insert that. I wish it was looking a bit like that today. But we're a little bit more gray today than we were yesterday. And once that's on there, I can edit, that to edit those objects. I can pick them up. I can move them around. I can design the card the way I want it to be. And you can see by my tools up at the top here, it's picking up the different objects that I've selected that I can manipulate and move around. I can also add links in or embedded HTML code. I can add a question set. So if I wanted to have um, questions built in, so maybe I'm looking at a, a set of 10 questions I want my class to work through. I can build an assessment that embeds itself right onto a card to be able to use. You also have that toolbox that I showed you in Presenter. Um, so I could put my revealer or my spotlight tool. And we also have the added one of some really great little widgets here as well. So everything you need to create the lesson is all there right in that space. Okay. And come out of that for a second and come back into my other account. And what I want to do is just really quickly, you, you, you have an idea of what a lesson is like because obviously I've been using one here. 
Um, I'm just going to go down and let me see if I can find um, one here. Just to give you an idea, this is a, a lesson that I, I created for um, a, a conference of our, our partners, our resellers, um, just to give them an idea of what they can do in class flow. So I'm just going to go up to edit lesson here, which will take me in. So you can see here that I built up the cards down the side here that have all different kinds of content on there. So I've got text and images. This one is a polling card. So even though it doesn't have a question on it, I know what I want the question to be, what I would ask my class. And it also has text hidden there. So I could reveal that to my class in the lesson. I can embed content on there. So I have an embedded video on this card here that would play with my lesson. Or content that I want my class to manipulate. Maybe I send this to them as a creative card and I want them to be able to move that information around. You can also see I've got an activity on a card as well. Um, and this one here has those questions. So you can see at the bottom it's telling me that there's actually four questions on this card that when I deliver to my class, I could get them to play. Once I've got it ready, what I can do is right from here, I can deliver my lesson. So it asks me any of the classes I have in my list down there. Um, but again, I'm just going to deliver it to my ad hoc class. And when I do that, all of you should now have that lesson sent to you. So uh, where it's maybe just catching up with that. Um, but that lesson would come to your devices. And then I can work through that and present that with you. OK? So I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of, of the whole lesson concept as well. So just to finish off, let's come back to my webinar. Here we go. And open that up again. I'm going to deliver that to you guys. And just come down here a little bit till we get back in there. OK. So just before I finish up and hand back over to Ashley. Ashley, are there any questions that, that um, anybody has put forward for answering now? Uh, no, again, there's not questions, just positive feedback, to be honest with you, which is uh, just as good, if not better. Um, just saying how, how diverse uh, Classflow is then, um, how it's opened up a new world in the classroom as well, which, um, which absolutely does. So, so yeah, I think it's all been very, very positive feedback and very indicative of, of what Classflow can do for them. Okay, great. Thanks, Ashley. So just to finish up, once again, just to remind you, help and support is always there, and it's built throughout um, the Classflow software. So just look for that little icon at the top. It'll always be at your top right here, um, where you can find that live help, and you also have a little drop down there that gives you some helpful video tutorials for the area of class flow that you're in, as well as the help sheets and the support line as well. So thank you so much for listening, everybody. And just to finish off, if you've got another minute, I'm going to pass you over to Ashley, and he's going to wrap the session up for us today. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for that, Janice. Okay, everyone, so thank you very much for joining us today. Um, I hope you did really enjoy it and get something from this. It's going to help you do some of these in your classrooms. Um, so what next? So if you would like to go to classflow.co.uk, and if you haven't done so already, if you'd like to create an account, uh, it's completely free to do that. Um, we're going to, we've recorded this WebEx. We'll be sending this out to you all as well. So. If there's anything you want to go over again, by all means, have a listen to that and uh, make some notes. Um, register for more of these WebEx sessions as well, because you will really get a lot from these when we go into uh, more depth as well with Classflow over time. Uh, and then there's other resources you can use as well for more training. So we've got learn.classflow.co.uk and Classflow training in the marketplace. You're going to get a lot more tips um, on how to, to really make this work for you. Um, and then as well, if, you, if you're active on social media, we're very active on there, very responsive to any questions we get. And we love to, uh, to see what you're doing in your classrooms as well. It's great for us to share this as well with all our followers and, and just see what it's like in the real world. We, we always love to, uh, to get feedback from you all. So um, you can like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Uh, we do have videos on YouTube as well. 
Uh, and finally, if you'd like to subscribe to the resource as well, which is, uh, as Janice mentioned earlier on, it's where there's uh, loads of blogs and there's loads of information all centered around ed tech and everything like that. So uh, it's a very topical and very useful as well. So uh, once again, thank you very much, everyone, and we'll see you again soon. Thanks, everyone. Have a good evening.